What's up, my fetchers? Yes, we are beginning a brand new chapter today. We are beginning chapter five. And I got some bad news for you, folks. We're dropping another F-bomb on you. In chapter five, we're not talking about fractions, but we're talking about factoring. And that is another nasty F word in math. The entire chapter is about factoring. So before we even get started on anything, I want to take a little minute and I want to talk to you. This is your last chapter for the semester, okay? And this is one of the hardest chapters. You have a lot of things going on with all your other classes competing for your attention. Term papers and other final exams that will come up in a couple of weeks and things of that nature. I want you to be really prepared for this test. I'm going to do all I can to make this really easy to understand, but the reality is this is a hard working chapter. A few bits of advice about this chapter. Number one, do your homework. And number two, don't get behind. Stay on top of all of your commitments so that uh, you're not procrastinating and you're not trying to play catch up. This is a chapter that will eat you alive if you do that. So today we're going to start in section 5.1. If you remember in chapter 4, we doubled up on all of our assignments. 4, 1, and 2 were together. 4, 3, 4, 4. 4, 5, 4, 6. 4, 7, 4, 8. But here in chapter 5, we're just going to do one section at a time. So, tonight's homework or today's homework or whatever time of day it is in your world, we're going to just do section 5.1. In fact, you'll see it tonight, but it'll, or on, online, it'll be 5.1, 1 through 51 odd. But you can look that up in Canvas and check that out. Um, so, a couple more things about this. You are, uh, this is a challenging chapter as I've stated, and um, I want to share a, a couple other thoughts that I have uh, as we head into the final weeks here. You're going to need some extra help. Tutoring is available to you. Uh, we've sent out lots of emails. Make sure that you're reaching out to tutors and getting the extra help you need. My last bit of advice is this. Uh, many of you really like the YouTube videos, so we're going to keep doing this for you, um, trying to make these and make it work. Um, but the other videos, some of you did like those too, so I've sent you both, but I do want to say one thing. I do insist that you get the processes that I give you for your notes in Chapter 5. And if you want more examples, you can use the older videos, the BYU-Idaho videos, um, for extra examples, but I do want you to get notes in here. First thing I want you to do right now is I want you to look at this. I, um, I want you to, uh, I'm going to read over this with you in a moment, but I want you to pause your video and write this chart down. I want you to write this chart. Don't worry about, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. I just want you to write this chart down. So we're going to hit pause and you're going to do that. All right, so you wrote all that down. There are five methods by which you can factor a polynomial. So we talked in the last chapter, polynomials are everything. And we can factor polynomials with these five different methods. Today we're going to learn method one and method two. Next time that we meet, we're going to learn method three, and then we'll do method four, and then we'll do method five. Each of those will be an individual lecture each day. So there's four different lectures to cover these five methods. Today we do these first two, and that's everything in section uh, 5.1. Uh, you've done method one before, we're going to discover that. I want you to first look up here, okay? The first method is called the pull out the common factor method, okay? Some people like to call it the common fetcher method in uh, memory of Brother Rich. Thank you very much. We're just going to say the CF for common factor. We're going to teach you about that here in a moment. The next method is grouping, and we all know grouping rhymes with that's right, pooping. Very good. So that'll help you remember that one, okay? Then we got the x squared plus bx plus c method, and bear with me, we're writing all this down. Some of this seems like gibberish right now, but we're going to explain what these mean as we go. This method is where a equals 1. Here we have ax squared plus bx plus c where a doesn't equal 1, and here we have special cases. I want to take a minute and I want to just uh, give you an analogy, okay? So, uh, you know, we're in this COVID-19 uh, health crisis right now. And so I want us to think about a different health crisis, uh, cancer, okay? If we were all cancer doctors, and forgive me if this is a sensitive topic for any of you, I know most of us, cancer has touched our lives in one way or another, uh, whether in 
our own lives personally or with a loved one or a friend. And so cancer, obviously, we all hate cancer. And, uh, but I want you to pretend you're a cancer doctor. Now, I'll ask you this question. If you went to the doctor today and you were worried if you had cancer, um, would you want them to check everything in your body or just a little bit of your body? Obviously, you want them to check everything because you want to make sure that you've taken care of it all. And if you had surgery to remove cancer, um, would you want them to get rid of most of it or all of it? Exactly, of course, you want them to get rid of all of it. I want you to pretend like when we're factoring that we're like cancer doctors. And we're, our, our goal is to get rid of all the cancer in the polynomial. And so this becomes then a five-step process. Now think about it. Um, we go into a doctor's office and uh, someone gets diagnosed with cancer and uh, they go in there and they examine you and they're like, you know what, uh, I think we've located the cancer but you don't have it in your lymph nodes um, and you don't have it um, in your vital organs and so you know, I, think we can, I think we can tackle this. Well, the thing is about this, is factoring works the same way, is that we have to go through all these methods and eliminate things that aren't possibilities anymore. But if they are a possibility, then we got to go in and do surgery and remove the cancer. Okay, and so the first thing I want you to understand is this first method called the plot, the common factor. What type of polynomial is this method possible on? Well, every polynomial. Now think about the word possible. Does that mean that every polynomial is going to have a common factor? No, absolutely not. But every polynomial has the potential to have a common factor. So let's look at this polynomial right here. Okay, how many terms are in this polynomial? Let's count them. One, two, three, four terms. Okay, four terms. So we look at our chart here, and the first thing we see is that this could have a common factor, so we check it for a common factor. Now I just want to show you everything in here is divisible by what? Yeah, two. Every term is divisible by two. Good job. So one of the things I want you to get is that factoring is the opposite, it is the opposite of distributing, okay? And if you remember, distributing is when we multiply. So everybody, what is the opposite of multiplication? Of course, division. And so if factoring, I'm sorry, if distributing is multiplying and these are opposites, then factoring equals division, okay? And so we think about this right here. When we ended our last section, we were dividing polynomials. Math always builds on itself. One thing leads into another. And so we're going to learn how to factor out a common factor of two here. The other thing is, is that the number of terms also identifies to you what other methods or possibilities. Again, you counted this, there were four terms. And so factoring by grouping will also be a possibility in this problem, okay? Dry your eyes over to this side of the board. Can you see this, Master Nicole? Yes. Yes, okay. X squared minus 4X minus 21. I got Nicole helping me with vids again. She's a rock star. She's behind the camera, okay? <laughs> X squared minus 4X minus 21. She was wearing her Daisy Duke shorts. I told her that that, that wasn't BYU-Idaho approved, so uh, she's uh, fully clothed now, and, and yeah, so. Anyways, it's all good. She curled her hair just for you. Come on over here, Nicole. Come on. Let's see those curls. Girls with curls. So cute. All right. Peace. All right. <laughs> x squared minus 4x minus 21. How many terms? That's right. Three terms. So is uh, pulling out a common factor a possibility? Always. As a cancer doctor, every patient we have to observe and, and check them to see uh, for certain vitals, and this vital is the common factor. We must check to see if it has a common factor. So we're going to look at this polynomial here, and, and again, I'm just giving you a broad overview. We're not expecting you to understand how to do all this right now. I just want you to get that this is how we're going to teach you to do the whole chapter, and this is our overview of the entire chapter. I've talked to you before about being problem identifiers, and what does this do for us? It helps us identify which methods of factoring can be utilized in these, okay? So our goal though is to factor out every possible thing we can, just like a cancer doctor would get rid of all the cancers. We come back here, we have three terms. 
Uh, are any are there like terms here? Doesn't look like it. And again, we're going to review this concept, and there's not. Okay, but we had to check because pulling out a common factor is always a possibility. Next thing is factoring by grouping a possibility. No, because there's not four terms. You have to have four terms for that. But these two methods are trinomial methods. Now you'll never use both of these. It'll be one or the other, and it's based on whether a equals one or a doesn't equal one. So put a little verses there, okay? Now a is a is the coefficient in front of the squared term. So a equals one in this instance, and so we would use method three, not method four. And then special cases, binomials. We'll get into that. Uh, later on. I just wanted to give you an overview today. So in summary, ultimately, okay, number one, this is your final chapter. Number two, it's super challenging. Number three, you got to do your homework and not get behind. Number four, we need to understand this overarching process that allows us to factor everything. Let's go ahead and make sure we have notes on all of this. We'll put a pause. We'll come right back. All right, let's rock and roll. So the first method of factoring you have seen this before. We talked about it briefly in, um, it's been a while. I can't remember which chapter, forgive me, but we did talk about this briefly. So the first thing I want you to do right now is I want you to take a minute and I want you to write all of this down. These are the steps for this method, okay? Now, write this down, and as soon as you get on writing that down, I want you to write all of this information down Okay, so I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to say stop in a moment and you write that stuff down. Stop. All right, so we're back. Hopefully you wrote all that down. So we're going to get to this process in a minute here, but the first thing I want to do is that if we have a series of terms and they're being added or subtracted in a polynomial and we need to look for a common factor, Okay, we need to understand the rules of engagement and how to find the greatest common factor. Now, people can say, Brother Rich, why don't you call it the GCF? Because I'm lazy. I don't want to put a G in there. I just want to call it the CF. Okay, because the common factor has always got to be the greatest common factor in this instance. So we're just going to call it the CF. Nicole, what's our first problem that I want? 8x squared. 8x squared. Negative 4x. Negative 4x. Negative 20. Negative 20, okay? So I want you to open up your textbooks right now. What page are we on, Nicole? 399. We're on page 399, okay? So get your textbooks out. You can pause for a minute if you need to get that out and open up. What number are we doing right now, Nicole? Number six. This is number six in your homework, okay? And so all the even problems, you get extra credit, we'll do them, and then you can throw them on your homework and get some bonus points. Way to rock and roll, okay? So notice, please look up here, it, it, I'm not adding or subtracting this, I just have commas in between because I have three separate terms, and if I asked you to find the greatest common factor among these three terms, these principles guide us. First of all, we need to look at both numbers and letters, and on letters it says for each variable, okay? So we'll talk about that in a minute. So we look at these three terms, I have 8x squared, negative 4x, negative 20, and what do they all share in common, okay? And so we're basically saying, you know, what do they share in common, okay? Or basically, you know, what are they all divisible by, okay? So what are these three terms all divisible by numerically? Can you look up there? Okay, some of you are saying two, yeah, for sure. But what's the greatest common factor? Yep, they're all divisible by four, okay? And some people worry like, hey, what about the negatives? We don't worry about the negatives when finding um, the greatest common factor. So we could write on here, you know, don't worry about the negatives, okay? Don't worry about the negatives. All right, so every one of these is divisible by four. So our greatest common factor, we're just gonna call the CF, is four. And then we look at the variables. We have an x squared and an x. Do we have an x here? No, we don't. Okay, so I want you to look at this right here, this, this principle right here. It must be common among all the terms. It must be common among all the terms. Okay, no two out of three ain't bad. You can't say, oh, well, they got, you know, two of them have x's, so, you know, two out of three ain't bad. You know, x is probably a common factor. Eh. 
Get to be a common factor, you've got to be common among all the terms. So the greatest common factor here is 4. Did we get it right, Nicole? Yes. All right, sounds good. Let's do another one. What's the next one? Negative x squared. Negative x squared. Negative 6x. Negative 6x. Negative 24x to the fifth. Negative 24x to the fifth. Fifth. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. What number is this, Nicole? Number 10. This is number 10 in the homework tonight, section 5.1. Like, what? What homework? 5.1. Okay, let's do this problem real quick. Okay, what's the greatest common factor? So again, we look numerically, okay? Uh, does two go into this? Yes. Does two go into this? Yes. Uh, does six go into both of them? Yes. But does six or two go into this? No, okay? So there is no numerical common factor here. None, okay? Um, and we go back to this, no two out of three ain't bad because it must be common among all terms. This is a primary governing principle of how to find the greatest common factor. But we need to look at both numbers and letters. Okay, so we look at the letters. We have an x, we have an x, we have an x. This is an x squared. This is an x to the what? That's right. If there's nothing there, it's an x to the 1. It's kind of like a silent 1 there. And there's an x to the 5th. And that's where this concept comes into play. When we have a common variable, it's the lowest degree of that common variable. So it's not x squared, it's not x to the 5th, it's going to be x to the 1st. And so your common factor here is x. Do we get this one right, Nicole? Yes. Sweet. Okay. Now I want you to think about something here before we move on to our final example of how to find the greatest common factor. Then we'll start doing some factoring of some polynomials with common factors briefly. Okay. Um, how do we know uh, that these were all divisible by 2 and then up to 4 and this was all divisible by 6? Well, tools that help you find greatest common factors numerically are tools that we developed back in week 1. Our times tables. Divisibility test. If you go back to the R chapter, we said a number is divisible by 2 if it's even, 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, 5 if it ends in 0 or 5. And so you can look some of that stuff up. Your calculator can be really helpful. Do a little trial and error and put etc. on there. Just other tools that you've developed this semester that just help you recognize numerically when things uh, are sharing stuff in common. I'm going to quickly erase these two problems in the middle. We've got another example we want to do. Nicole's getting it ready. And what number are we doing now, Nicole? Number eight. Number eight. Okay, this one's a little bit thicker, meaning a little bit bigger. Go ahead, Nicole. 16p to the 6, q to the 4th. Okay. 32p to the 3rd, q to the 3rd. Okay. And negative 48pq squared. pq squared. All right, so this is the problem. I put these commas in between all this stuff to help you see where we've got these three different um, terms here. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second, and I want you guys to do this problem on your own and uh, see if you can come up with the common factor without my help. Go for it. All right, we're back. <laughs> If you never hit pause, we never left. But you did. I hope you did. And you did this problem. Okay. So remember, we look at both numbers and letters. Nicole! Nicole's here with me. She rocks. Okay. So numerically, let's just look at the numbers. 16, 32, and negative 40. Are we looking at the little numbers? No, no, no. Looking at the big numbers. When we talk about looking at both numbers and letters, we're talking about the big numbers. Okay. So out of 16, 32, and 48, okay, uh, if you came up with 2, you're right, they're all divisible by 2. If you came up with 4, you're right, they're all divisible by 4. But what's 2 times 4? That's 8. Okay, they're all divisible by 8. Guess what, people? If you got your calculator out, we talked about some other tools here. These are all divisible by 16 as well. So numerically, your common factor here, okay, the numerical portion is 16. All right? And then we have P's and Q's. And notice here, we said, look at both numbers and letters for each variable. So we're going to look at each variable individually, P's across. We have a P to the 6, P to the 3rd, and a P. So every one of them has a P. Okay, we've talked about P all semester. It's the best thing to do every morning when you get up, and it is a common variable that we like to mess around with in algebra too. Okay, so P to the 6, P to the 3rd, and P. Out of those, what's our common variable? That's right, it's just P to the 1st. So it would just be P. 
And that's because it's the lowest degree of the common variable. We have p to the sixth, p to the third, and p to the first. So that's the lowest degree of the common variable p. Okay? And then we look at the cubes. And there's a q to the fourth, a q to the third, and a q to the second. All right? So the lowest degree of the cubes, that's right, q to the second. Say woo if you got it right. Woo! Well, I hope you did. Okay? But you'll have plenty more to do in your homework tonight. I want to give you one more. Nicole, pick a nasty one. Another one similar to this. Let's do one more. And have you guys do this and see if you can do it on your own. Give us something similar to this. Okay, ready? Yep. Negative 17x to the fifth. Okay. Y, y, y to the third. Y, Y, Y. What else? <laughs> 34x to the third, Y squared. Mm-hmm. 51xy. Ooh. Okay, pause and do this. Go. All right, we're back. We're back, Cracker Jacks. Okay, check it out. 17 is a prime number. 17 goes into 34 twice, and it goes into 51 three times. Okay? And so, what's cool about this, if we have this determining the common factor here, um, is that if you have your calculator and you figure that out, you know the common factor equals 17. Some of you, again, you worry about the negative. I told you, don't worry about the negatives. That's right there. Okay? Uh, of the x's, we have x to the fifth, x to the third, and x. So what's our lowest degree? That's right, x to the first. And so we just have an x right here. And we have y to the third, y squared, and y, and again, just y. Hopefully you got that right. Say woo if you did. Woo! Say it to yourself right now. And if you did it right, give yourself a little hug, a little self-appreciation there, okay? All right, let's pause. Nicole, let's hit the pause button on this. Woo! All right, Fetchers of America, welcome back, okay, from doing your examples. All right, so all that did, the last exercise that we did, is it gave us the, you know, skills that we need to find the common factor, which is step one of this process. Look at this polynomial that we did an example of just a moment ago. What if we got rid of these commas, and in place of the commas, what if here we had a plus, and here we had a minus. And now we have a polynomial. So now we have a patient, a polynomial patient, coming to visit us in our office, and we need to get all the cancer out of this patient, which is basically all of the factoring that we can divide out of it, okay? And we have already determined that our common factor was 16 pq squared. And so that's step number one. We did that. We found the common number that was 16, p, the lowest degree was P, the lowest degree of the Q's was Q to the second. So we already did this problem just a little bit ago. And so now we need to place the common factor under each term in the polynomial. So we're going to take 16, P to the sixth, Q to the fourth, and we're going to put it over 16 P, Q squared. And you're going to see something happening with this process that's going to kind of jog your memory of something we recently just did. Okay, not today, another day. Plus 30T, 30T, Q, I'm going through puberty again. Sorry about that. 32P to the third, Q to the third, all over 16PQ squared. Okay? And then minus 48PQ squared, all over 16PQ squared. Now, look at what we did. We took the original polynomial, there it is, in all its glory, but we put the common factor under each term in the polynomial. That's what this step is right here. And now we simplify. Now, Fetchers of America, we did this in section 4.8. It was division of polynomials, a polynomial divided by a monomial. And so you have the skills to pay these bills. Numbers go with numbers. 16 over 16 is 1. P to the 6 over P, okay, so the 16s are gone. P to the 6 over P is P to the 6 minus 1, which is P to the 5th. Q to the 4th over Q to the 2nd is Q to the 4 minus 2, which is Q squared. Okay? Over here, again, numbers with numbers. So we're not teaching you this concept again because you know this concept. If you're struggling with how to simplify this, go back to the lecture we just did on section 4.8, and uh, you'll have this down. Numbers with numbers, 32 divided by 16 is 2. P to the 3rd over P is P to the 3 minus this one according to the laws of x ones that's p to the second. And q to the third over q squared is q to the three minus two, which is q to the first, which we just call q. 
48 divided by 16, okay, do it on a calculator, it goes in three times. Uh, P over P is gone, Q squared over Q squared is gone, and so this is our final answer, and no. What we've done is we've simplified, but we must always understand the answer format, okay? We pulled out, okay, we pulled out a common factor of this right here, 16 pq, pq squared. I can't, say, I can't say pq squared tonight. 16 puke. It's, it's 16 puke, yeah, exactly. 16 puke squared, okay? 16 pq squared is the common factor. It goes outside of the parentheses. And I want you to think about this for just a minute, okay? The opposite of factoring is multiplication. The opposite of division is multiplication. So we just divide it out of 16 pq squared. If we multiply this times this, we would have 16 p times p to the fifth would be p to the sixth. q squared q squared would be q to the fourth. And we would have 16 p to the sixth q to the fourth. If we do that to this, 16 times 2 would be 32. P times P squared would be P to the third. Q squared times Q would be Q to the third. 16 PQ squared times negative 3. 16 times negative 3 would be negative 48. And the PQ squared would carry. This and this are the same. That's right. Let's pause this for a second, Nicole. Okay, guys, we are going to uh, pause this and let you take some notes, and then I'm going to put some practice problems on the board and see if you can follow these steps and pull out the common factor on these practice problems. This will be part of the second part of the lecture. Um, the way these videos work, just so you know, um, for some reason I cannot go past a certain minute amount, and so this will be in part two. Okay, we'll see you on the flip side.